Hey, it's Grant. Today I'm baking sourdough bread and I'm going to be comparing the Challenger bread pan and my Lodge Dutch oven. Let's go! So here I've got my Challenger bread pan on the right and my Lodge Dutch oven on the left. Both of these pans are used by bread bakers to trap steam during the first half of the baking time. The one on the left is an enameled cast iron Dutch oven, so it's got a layer of enamel over the cast iron, and it's just for regular cooking, but bread bakers use them a lot and it works really well. Then the Challenger is made of dark black cast iron, and it's specifically designed for bread bakers. So with that in mind, I'm going to put these to the test, bake the same loaf of bread in each pan, and see if there's any difference in the final loaves of bread. These are the breads I'm going to be testing with today. They're 845 gram boules. They're about 20% whole grain sourdough bread loaves. Proofed them in these two bowls overnight so they'd be exactly the same weight and exactly the same size. I'm going to test out the Dutch oven first. So I'm going to move this to my oven where it's preheating to 500 degrees. I'm going to preheat this for half an hour. And I've got a non-convection gas oven and I usually put it on the second rack. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Challenger later. Okay, the bread has been proofing overnight in the fridge. I just popped it out of the fridge because the oven is preheated. For the Dutch oven, one of the hard things is transferring the bread into the Dutch oven without burning yourself on the sides of the hot Dutch oven. So I always use a piece of parchment paper. So when using the Dutch oven like I am, just get a piece of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than the bread, or the dough I should say. Flip it out, dust off the flour, score the bread. Just carefully transfer the bread, grabbing both sides of it like that. Drop it down in. Lid on top and bake this for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes of baking, this is what we got. Now I'm going to keep that lid off and finish baking this for 20 more minutes. My bread is actually looking about as dark as I want it after about 18 minutes. So I'm going to pull this out. It baked for 20 minutes with the lid on and then 18 minutes with the lid off. And here's how the bread turned out that was baked in the Lodge Dutch oven. Now just like the Dutch oven, I'm going to preheat the Challenger bread pan for 30 minutes. Okay, now that the Challenger is preheated, I'm going to move the base of the pan here, and the top of the pan, I'm going to keep it on top of my oven. benefit to the Challenger is you don't need to transfer your dough to the base of the pan with parchment paper. You can go directly to the pan because of the shallow base and you won't burn yourself, in theory. There we go. I'm still going to dust some of this excess flour off of the top of the loaf. Score it. Pop the lid on and bake this for 20 minutes with the lid on.
And after 20 minutes, this is what the challenger bread looks like. Just gonna put this back in the oven with the lid off. Continue baking this for another 20 minutes or so. And this bread looked done after 18 minutes, so I decided to take it out. And this keeps the total bake time the same as the Dutch oven. 20 minutes with the lid on and 18 minutes with the lid off. And here's how the bread turned out that was baked in the Challenger. Still hot. And here are the two final loaves of bread. The one baked in the Dutch oven on the left and the one baked in the Challenger bread pan on the right. They both rose up in the oven to about the same height. So there wasn't really a big difference in oven spring that I can tell between the two pans. One difference I did see was that the Challenger bread pan seemed to give the bread a much darker crust. It's probably due to what it's made of. It's a dark cast iron, probably retains heat better. So if you are baking in a Challenger bread pan, I think you could probably bake for a little bit less time or at an even lower temperature to get the same results as in a Dutch oven. Another interesting difference I noticed was that the Dutch oven gave the bread kind of an uneven black spotting on the bottom of the bread. I'll probably raise my Dutch oven up one rack in the oven so that doesn't happen next time. But it was interesting that the Challenger bread pan, even though it was a little black on the bottom, it wasn't as uneven. There weren't those dark black spots everywhere. It was just more of an even browning. So I just thought that was an interesting difference too. One thing I really like about this Dutch oven on the left is that it's got that one handle on top so I can take the lid off with just one hand but it does have those high sides, so to get the bread in, I usually transfer it in with parchment paper so I don't burn myself. That's the downside. Whereas the Challenger has a really cool design with a flat, shallow base. I just load my dough right on top, score it, and then put the domed lid over top of it to trap the steam. And what's cool about the Challenger is it's longer, so I can fit small baguettes in this, uh, where I couldn't fit any type of baguette into my round Dutch oven. So I think that's a big upside to the Challenger if you do bake a lot of bread. These are definitely both great bread pans to bake in. If you're looking for some kind of baking vessel to trap steam while you're baking, both of these will do an amazing job. If you've got a little bit of extra money to spend or you bake a lot of sourdough bread, I'd highly recommend the Challenger bread pan, but the Lodge Dutch oven will work great for you as well. Thanks for watching this video. This has been Grant Bakes comparing the Challenger bread pan to my Lodge Dutch oven. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn how to make better bread, sourdough, and pizza at home, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you later.